Hello and welcome to another edition of the e-commerce Odyssey podcast. I'm here with Shani from Aptio and we're going to talk about how you can use AI to improve customer retention. So Shani, you obviously run a, a company called Aptio which specializes in using AI to increase, you know, to, to um, increase, <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> improve marketing through, through AI. Would you like to tell us the, the five top things that you think that e-commerce stores should be doing in terms of customer retention? Yeah. And first of all, thank you so much for having me on the podcast, Trevor. It's, it's great to be here. Um, so when it comes to customer retention, obviously, we think that's a really important topic these days, especially because everyone's having trouble acquiring new customers. I think the first thing, most important thing is stay in touch with your customers. It sounds simple, but most stores see that their customers, most of their customers only by once, and then they disappear. And without reaching out to those customers again with additional email campaigns, with additional ads, or even just a thank you letter, uh, those customers are never gonna come back. And so it sounds simple, but um, tell your customers that you still exist. This could happen in a different variety of different ways. And we'll you know get into that uh, later on. I think the second thing that you need to do when you're thinking about retention is um, making sure that you are sending the right offer to the right customer. So, you know, what does that mean? Well, like I said, uh, most of your customers on average, what we've seen is 70 to 80% of customers across all of our clients only by once, but you still have data and information about what those people have done. So you can reach back out to them with the right product or the right offer. So if you've got perhaps a few ladies who have bought dresses, you don't want to reach out to them with something that's more appropriate for men, you want to reach out to them with fashion and clothing and vice versa. So second tip is just make sure that you are personalizing your offers according to who your customers are. Third thing is just be aware of your uh, pricing and especially shipping. So one of the things that we found is if you have um, a constant sale or a constant sort of discount on your shipping, people are just going to wait and they're not going to come back until you get an even higher discount. But if you have Offers that expire or offers that are once a month or once every couple of months, you send those offers to the right people uh, and you time it properly, then you're going to be able to get a lot of folks who appreciate your brand and are willing to come back once they see the right offer. So free shipping works really well for this. We generally recommend sending free shipping to your best customers or your loyal customers, but it'll work for everyone. So tip number three, be aware of your pricing and your shipping offers um, just in general, just because customers are price aware these days. Let's go with, uh, let's see, tip number four. What can you do to improve retention? Um, one of the things we actually recommend is telling your story. So a lot of brands these days, especially the ones that are selling on their own domains, you know, outside of Amazon, they've got a story. So maybe they're selling clothes to people who are, uh, you know, especially short or especially tall, or maybe they're for new mothers. Whatever your story is, tell your customers because your customers found out who you were through some sort of ad or email or word of mouth, and they want to hear about you, especially if you're a smaller brand, a lot of customers these days want to learn about who they're, who they're supporting and go from there. So number four, don't be afraid to tell your story if you've got a niche brand or if you've got something that's special about you. And then fun, finally, the fifth one is, uh, let's say cross-selling, I think goes a long ways these days. So you know what somebody bought, you can actually go in and get somebody to buy something else based on what other customers have done, what this particular customer is likely to do next, you can cross sell across lots of different channels, email, Facebook, SMS, paid search, even on your website. So don't be afraid to show somebody a product that you know your system or uh, you think that they're likely to buy given what they've done in the past. So five quick tips to help. Oh, that, 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 that sounds pretty good. So, okay, so next obvious thing. Um, my experience with AI has been mixed, generally pretty good, but sometimes I found that it, it, it just comes up with bizarre yep. um, answers to things. So how would you, how does your system make best use of AI to, to do these things? First off, what is your, tell us what your system does or what, what it focuses on. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the word AI today is so fraught with like lots of inconsistencies and it's kind of a buzzword. Today, our system, Aptio specifically, what we do is we essentially uh, get all the data that we have about your customers and we use it to predict what your customers are likely to buy next, or if those customers are never likely to come back, we'll predict that as well. So our AI basically predicts what each customer will do in the future, specific to your store. Now, this is helpful because once you know if somebody, you know, somebody is likely to buy product A, you can start to show them product A in an email campaign, SMS, cross-sell it on, S on Facebook and Google, and maybe you offer them a small incentive. 
um, you know, because they're already likely to, to buy this product, you might want to send them a 5% off offer as opposed to a 25% offer, which you might blast out to your entire audience. So that's what our AI does. Now it's, you know, we've heard all sorts of crazy stories these days about AI beating games and writing stories and all that. In our case, it's really just set up to understand what your customers are going to do next and then helping you as the marketer send them the right message based on that prediction. So my question, so how much setup does your tool use? What does it do that, you know, does it, what does it do to save time and to do things better? There's a couple of ways that we help. So we built this thing in conjunction with both agencies and brands. We know that they're, uh, they don't have a lot of time. I, I actually have my own small e-commerce store. So I know how tough it is to get up and running with marketing. We've made the tool plug and play. So you don't have to do anything other than if you're on Shopify, installing the Shopify app, and then maybe connecting your email tools like Klaviyo and Facebook and PostScript. So what, what happens is basically you install the app. After a couple of hours, we'll, we'll have all of your data processed and we'll predict, we'll have predictions for all your customers on what they're going to do next. We'll group customers together based on similarity of what they're likely to do. And then we'll basically sync these, uh, these segments of customers to your email tools or your SMS tools and your Facebook tools. From there, you as a marketer can start to create customized campaigns, customized emails. You can start to import dynamic products into your emails so that they'll be filled in automatically for each individual person. Uh, or if you want us to help, we'll actually go in and help create those campaigns for you. And those campaigns, because they're personalized, tend to have a higher re uh, response rate, higher conversion rates than perhaps a more generic email blast or Facebook campaign. So what, I mean, what, what is, how, how customized are these things? Because I mean, is it just a kind of, obviously, you know, you have a template, you know, I've got an email template. And then, I mean, is it that I need to decide I'm going to create a certain type of campaign? So I'm yeah. going to, and then, you know, your tool then fills in the bits. Or as in, it, it, you know, I say, okay, I'm going to send that an email and it's going to be product recommendations and your tool will do the product recommendations. Or will it just do the whole thing? You'll start from a blank page and it'll just fill in the whole blank page. What, yeah, it's what, interesting. What you, yeah. It's kind of a, the sky's the limit when it comes to you as a marketer, how you use the tool. So what we've seen most people do, most of them already have some sort of email blast set up or email flow or campaign, maybe once a week or once every couple of weeks. And if they don't, they can use Aptio to set it up. And what happens is you can basically start to insert, uh, let's say dynamic products. So placeholder products that will then be filled in for each individual customer. It takes maybe one or two minutes to do. It goes into your existing workflow, super simple. Now this is probably on the simplest end. On the most sort of sophisticated end, you can actually start to create uh, omni-channel campaigns where you've got maybe one particular group of people who are likely to buy your best product you create an email campaign specifically for them with a, maybe a three or four sort of email flow. Uh, you combine that with an SMS campaign and a Facebook campaign, all of that using the, the data from Aptio. What we've seen work best is kind of what I just mentioned, where let's say you've got a group of people who you know what they're likely to do next, or you know what their characteristics are. You send them a couple of different campaigns across different channels that results in sort of the best conversion. Uh, really depends on who you are as a marketer, what sort of techniques you like to use, or if you're having us help out, uh, kind of what we've, you know, what we agree to help you out with. So, I mean, is it because I, mean, I, I like tools which are totally automated. I love a, I love a setup. I don't like running things, right? So, if I was to, okay, so if I wanted to run, a, you know, what would you recommend for someone as lazy as me? Yeah, I would say you get started. You install the app. And you wait a couple hours and then you connect your Klaviyo campaigns or your Klaviyo accounts or MailChimp accounts, whatever you're using. And then you basically just use the plug and play sort of functionality from Aptio to update your existing email campaigns. So take an existing campaign, drag and drop the recommended product section. Those products will be filled in automatically. A little bit of a, a, little bit of a sort of uh, manual work there, but it shouldn't take more than a couple of minutes. Okay. Because I know that Klaviyo already had, does Klaviyo already, already have a prediction tool there? They've got a prediction tool, <clears throat> excuse me, they've got a prediction tool. So we actually supplement it. We provide a different way for you to use it. We provide sort of different styling capabilities. And what we've seen is it works pretty well. A lot of our customers are using our uh, prediction tool more than they're using Klaviyo. And it's just because we provide sort of, I won't say we provide more accurate data. We just provide a data, you know, a, a set of tools that are easier to use and seem to be driving more sales than what these customers have used in the past. Okay. So does your tool, okay, so what is the kind of customer life cycle here? So you obviously someone buys something on the site, right? Um, yep. Are you recommending, a, is, it, is it all recommending things to people after they've made the first purchase or do you do anything on the site itself? 
we primarily are post-purchase. So once you make a purchase, we'll go in, we'll start to figure out what you're likely to do next. And then we'll help the marketer understand what they can cross sell these people with or what they can upsell. Or if these people are at risk of never coming back, we'll show that to the marketer and they can start to offer discounts to get them back. We do a little bit of work on the customer acquisition side as well, but because we're talking about retention today, I'll hold off until the next uh, the next chat to talk about that. Okay. So what do you think? I mean, what what is the how good do you think AI is these days? I mean, is it is, is it that um, you know? Can we, could you with your tool? Could I just you know just leave it and it will do sensible things, or will it? How much do I need to watch it in order to make sure that it doesn't go crazy? I mean, I, I'll would, give you an example. Yeah. Right? Can I I'll give you an example yeah. of something going crazy? So um i sell we sell um toy microwaves right right it's plastic right yep. but google cannot understand the difference between a toy microwave and yeah. a real microwave so it's forever <laughs> advertising these toy microwaves and surprise surprise well people sometimes buy these toy microwaves thinking they're oh no very upset but is it is it doing you know can it will it do that kind of thing do i need to watch it it's a great question. We look at AI as a tool for the human who's doing some work. So from our perspective, you're a marketer, you're coming up with campaigns. You may not know exactly what to send to each person. You may not know what campaigns to run. That's where our tool will come into play. It takes the guesswork out of creating the campaigns, but you're going to be responsible for ultimately hitting the send button. So from our perspective, what we're trying to do is have you as the marketer spending less time in Excel, less time analyzing, less time trying to figure out what customers are likely to do next and just surfacing that data for you. That's what our AI does. Now, AI is getting really fancy and expensive and sort of really interesting these days, all sorts of different areas. But for us, what we want to do is make your job as a marketer much easier where you don't have to think or analyze numbers. You basically do the work on the creative side. So how do you, do you actually, okay, so I've got a, how does it work in practice, right? Or is it just kind of like a black box? I mean, okay, so I sell nursery products, right? Someone might come along and they might buy a toy for a six month year old, right? Yeah, yeah. How do you know, how would the system know if they just made one purchase? How would yeah, they, yeah. how would they know what, what email to send that person? So first off, we actually ask, uh, we mostly work with customers who have at least some minimum number of historical purchases because that's how an AI system will learn. Or as in, as in, as in the, the system, they've had per previous purchases. And... That's right. Okay, yeah. That's right. All of our customers, we generally recommend having at least 1,000 historical orders. Now, why is that important? Well, in your case, let's say somebody buys, comes in, they buy one thing. How do you know what they're going to do next? The way our system learns is it looks at everything that your customers have done in the past, and it kind of takes these snapshots of what they, what did they look like in the past? Who were they? Where did they live? How much did they spend? And then they fast forward a little bit and they say, did this customer do anything interesting in the future? So they take the snapshot, they fast forward, they see what they did. And the system just takes these snapshots, hundreds, thousands of these snapshots, and it starts to generalize these patterns that it learns about what people in the store are likely to do next based on what they've done in the past. So you can use this to apply what you know about people in the past to somebody who just came in and made their first purchase today. And from there, you actually get pretty predictive results. You know, a single person is maybe a little bit crazy. They're maybe not super predictable. But if you take people as a whole across a large group, you can start to actually predict their behavior pretty well. Okay. So, I mean, do you actually take using the external data or is it just literally just the data from the, the client's account? We do incorporate some external data. So uh, our primary data set is whatever you've got from your store, historical purchases, products. But we start to incorporate things like what people are viewing, what products they're looking at on your website, whether they've clicked on certain emails, whether they are likely to click on emails. We even incorporate certain things like external data sets about uh, name and gender. So we can start to predict if your customers are more, more male or female. We bring all this into play when the AI system is learning and making predictions. What are the, I mean, are there any privacy issues with this? It's funny, you know, in the, in the UK and probably the EU, there's a little bit more of a concern here. But from our perspective, um, all of our stores have a privacy policy where they are allowing customers to agree to their terms. Uh, we also have stores have these, these checkboxes where customers can choose to opt out of processing. And for most customers, actually, most of them are agreeing to have their data processed, primarily because when you first go to a store, you, you might even have this on your store, you get a pop-up that says, hey, give us your email address and your phone number and take 10% off or 20% off. That actually has a privacy uh, agreement that allows the, the store to use customer data. So privacy concerns are definitely there. Um, one of the things we do, we don't, we don't share data across stores. 
We only keep your store's data in one place. Uh, the data is only available to you as a marketer. You actually already have this data uh, through your Shopify system or your Klaviyo system. We're just going the extra step of crunching the numbers for you so you can understand how to better create marketing campaigns. Okay. So I mean, what kind of performance have you seen out of your tool? I mean, in terms of, you know, compared to how people were doing it previously, let's say in terms of time saved and yep. I don't know, what are your preferred metrics? Um, Anyway, you tell me what prefer, you tell me what your preferred metrics are. You probably know it always comes down to dollars or pounds driven, yes. right? You know, revenue, that's always a good one. Revenue is always a good one. So revenue is how our customers judge us first and foremost. Um, in general, we can increase revenue from anywhere from if you're a small store and you don't have a lot of data from 5% up to 20, 25, sometimes 30% if you're a larger store across the period of uh, one to two months. So our free trial is one month. In general, we're seeing incremental revenue of 5 to 15%. Um, so we're driving revenue, we're driving sort of these attributes, these, these sales. Um, but you know, you as a marketer these days are very quantitative. You're looking at lots of different metrics. So we also looked at metrics across the paid social system where we're increasing the return on ad spend from less than one to above one. Uh, we've dropped costs per millis by half in some cases. We have sort of seen ROAS return on ad spend go from you know less than one to three X or four X, like I've said. Uh, our click-through rates for our emails that we're supporting are really high, any, anything from like 40 to 50 to 60%. Um, so we're seeing really good results. Ultimately, they all translate into driven sales, which is what you as a marketer ultimately care about. So is it about saving into, okay, so does AI save people time or is it just enable people to spend the same amount of time better? It's, uh, you know, what's funny is we have both agencies and brands using us. On the agency side, we, all, we often hear that this saves them time. And why is that? So agencies are responsible for 10 or 20 customers at a time, if not more. They're responsible for creating these content calendars. They're responsible for creating these campaigns that are supposed to be high conversion. So a lot of our agencies used to spend you know, a lot of time in Excel trying to crunch numbers to figure out what to do next. And they don't have to do that anymore because we not only do we have this marketing automation system that the AI runs, but we have a whole analytics uh, section as well. So agencies save a lot of time, but they're ultimately using us to drive more revenue. Brands, it's all about the revenue for them. So maybe they were saving time using Aptio, but for them, it's all about creating campaigns that are performing well, performing better than they used to. Um, so there's a small cost savings, or sorry, small uh, time savings, but really it comes down to the sales driven. Okay, so where do you see, okay, so where do you see AI going in the future? Is it just, you know, what's Something, the next yeah. step for your product and for, you know, I'll AI driven to, uh, marketing? There's so many interesting things. So I'll talk a little bit more generally. You know, there I've got a, a friend of mine who's using AI to help you, AI and virtual reality actually, to help you see how a particular outfit will look on you. So if you're a fashion company, you can use avatars and actual images of yourself to understand how outfits will look on you. I think that's gonna be a really big thing going forward. I think the trend of continuing to gather customer data is gonna be really important. So for example, you've seen a lot of quizzes these days which ask you a lot of questions about what you prefer, where you're, you know, what you want to buy on the site. Then those quizzes start to recommend products uh, to you. I think systems like that are going to become more and more important, uh, especially with some recent privacy updates that are preventing sort of, you know, Facebook campaigns from working as well. I think that there's a lot of interesting things coming out specifically in the world of marketing and personalization, which AI does really well with. And that's, I'm a little biased, obviously, since that's where we work in. But I think you're going to start to see hyper-personalized landing pages hyper-personalized campaigns like we're doing, personalized uh, systems that can automatically start, optimize, and stop campaigns for the marketer uh, based on the data and based on the, based on the personalization aspects. So I think, it's gonna, I think AI is going to take a lot of the grunt work and a lot of the heavy lifting out of driving sales from marketing campaigns going forward. Um, but I also see a lot of uh, interesting, interesting things happening on the site uh, as well. Okay. Cool. Well, um, can you... Um... It's been very interesting learning about learning about uh, AI and marketing. But I, I, at the end of every podcast, I always ask a general question: What has inspired you recently? Oh, I love anything. that. You know, um, this is going to sound kind of bad, but you know, in the US, oh, no, just stop there. <laughs> <laughs> no, carry on. Not necessarily bad. It's going to sound maybe maybe questionable. In the US, there's this there's been this recent trend, what they call a great resignation. Right, everybody is starting to quit jobs that they don't like or start a do something else that perhaps calls out to them a little bit more. And I think that's inspiring because a lot of these people are hopefully pursuing things that are more interesting for them. They're sort of getting out of uh, positions that they don't want to be in and starting to work on things that they want to do. 
And that's inspiring to me because as a, as a startup founder, that's, that's always been my philosophy. Um, I've never really liked working at big companies. I always like building things for myself. Uh, that can help others. So that's one thing that's inspiring me. Now, maybe there's some talk that this might actually turn into the, uh, you know, people going back into the office and sort of regretting the great regretting period for people who <laughs> resign. Uh, let's hope that's not the case. Um, but I'm I'm really inspired to see people starting. Maybe to we need we things. need to have, um, you know, like universal uh, general. What's it called? Universal income. Then oh yes, do UBI. Like. Yep, that yeah, will be interesting. General, great. What's it? You know, we can we can then. Everyone gets whatever ten thousand pounds a year to do what they like. Wouldn't that be um, amazing? You know, uh, maybe one day. I suspect. Well, it'll... one day it's going to happen. I think one yeah. day it'll happen because, in some ways, we're not that far away from it. You know, I agree. If because there's a big problem with, um, you know, with with benefits, and there's a real stigma on benefits. Yeah. But if everyone just got the same benefits, then there'd be no stigma. You know, it would just be. And it would be instead of having all these people deciding what benefits people got, then everyone yeah. would get the same benefits. Yeah, it's very true. I suspect it's going to happen. I think that, I've, you know, we're probably getting a little bit off topic here, but wealth inequality <laughs> is growing and things are sort of getting a little bit, you know, questionable in, in social equality things. So I suspect it's it's going to be a good tool for people uh, to implement to solve some of these issues. Yeah, I hope so. I love you speaking to you. I look forward to trying out your product. Thank you so much, Trevor. We'll get you a free trial, your listeners as well, if they want to reach out. So I appreciate I'll put, you a, I'll put a link in the notes. Perfect. Thank you so much for having Thanks. me. Bye-bye. Take care. Have a good one.